Hey everybody and welcome back to Dash Studio. In this video we're going to look at how to use Dash Studio to create animated characters within our Rempi games. Now in this situation I've got a character lounging on a sun lounger and I don't want them to be like massively animated, I just want them to breathe so I want to see their stomach and chest rising and falling. Essentially I don't need them to do anything else. Then it's quite a simple process to do this and we're going to do it using the animated film strip function in Rempi for which we need to create a series of images essentially of our animation. So the first thing we have to do is obviously build our scene as I've already done here and then we're going to open our timeline. And immediately the first adjustments that we need to make here are we need to set the frames per second and the number of frames in total. Now 8 is okay, 16 is better, obviously the more frames that you have per second the better the animation is going to be but obviously bearing in mind that we have to render out all of these at uh, one time we really want to keep it at a reasonable kind of rate now my experience is that having 32 frames 16 frames a second so we get a two second animation that loops round and round of a character breathing is really sufficient to be able to do that the next thing you have to do obviously is go into your animate 2 and you have to firstly find the character that you want to animate. So in this case, I want to select this character here, the mum character, and we need to actually add some animations. Now you can find those in your AniBlocks, in your smart content, if you actually have any. Obviously you have to actually purchase those from various different sources before you do anything else. So if you haven't already got some AniBlocks in Dash Studio, I would advise you to go and get some if you intend to follow this tutorial. And I've already got some, so I'm just going to select the ones that I want. Again, I'm not gonna be showing you which animation specifically that I'm using. You're probably gonna see names pop up on the screen anyway, but I just obviously want to, as you can see, there are some uh, slight weird adjustments that happen when you hover over the uh, animations in your there we go, that's the one. So I'm gonna go with this one, like that, and I'll select it again. Cool beans, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna add a second track to that character so that I can actually add some blinking as well. Although, to be honest, blinking is barely gonna be noticeable. In fact, do you know what? I'm not gonna, let's just leave it. Let's just leave it nice and simple. We've got breathing animation there. For some reason, the character has moved, so we need to double check that. So we're gonna run our animation, that's going to just take a moment and then you can actually see what's going on and you can see that for some reason she's moved to the left a certain amount so we actually need to go back to the very first frame in our animation and actually move her back to where she's supposed to be as you can see she's moved weirdly in both planes so we're just going to zoom in on that yeah it wasn't actually that she'd moved to the left I think she'd actually just moved back so if we do Control Z she'll move back that way and now we can just position her manually like so and just make sure that she's not suddenly clipping through the bench it doesn't appear that she's moved in the y direction at all it looks like she's entirely moved in the she might have moved a fraction actually yeah looking at that so let's just bring her up a smidge so that she's not clipping into the bench Bearing in mind that we are a fair distance away from the character over here, so it hasn't, that's the wrong camera, helpful. Yeah, so it doesn't matter a great deal if there is a slight discrepancy, but you want it to at least look good. The next thing you want to do is if your character's got D-Force hair or something like that, you're going to need to go into your simulation settings, which I can show you here. In your simulation settings, what I would advise is you turn off your start bones from the memorized pose have a one second initialization time which i'm going to do like that that just gives the opportunity for the clothes and the hair to fall into place before you start the animation and then you're going to change the frames to simulate to animated use the timeline play range and then you're going to have to run that simulation so i'm going to do that now and i will speak to you in a just a second so now that we've run our simulation, our hair is now animated throughout the frames as per the DeForce setting. So basically that side of things is ready to go. So now what we need to do is actually set up our render. And there's two stages that we need to follow. The first thing we need to do 
is to actually choose what parts of this scene are going to render because we've already got this scene rendered in our game all we want is this bit we want this character animated we do unfortunately have to have the entire scene rendered as in the resolution of the image and that's because the way that we're going to implement this is by using a transparency mask which is one of the stages of our rendering process but so we still have to keep a 1920 by 1080 resolution image but only this part of the png is going to have any data in it the rest of it is going to be completely transparent so the first thing that we have to do is bring up our render settings tab which i've got here and we're going to go into our general and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to change this to 1920 and because i've got the ratio set up you can see that immediately jumps to our 1080p now we're going to change this from still image to image series and the render range as you can see is automatically jumped from where it was it's now starting at frame 0 to frame 31 so 32 frames and we can give it a base image i'm just going to call this one uh, like uh, mum underscore pool underscore annie which is just an annotation to me to show that that's what it is it's going to be an animation it just allows me to use code to decipher whether or not my image that's going to be displayed on the screen is going to be animated or otherwise the next thing we need to do is go into our progressive rendering and we're going to turn off our rendering quality and we're going to set our max samples to i'm going to say 500 the image is going to be tiny so it doesn't need to be super 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 sharp and then we've done that now we need to come into our filtering and god forbid i'm actually going to recommend that you do use the post denoiser and we're going to turn that on and we're going to post denoiser available post denoiser start iteration i'm actually going to set that to 475 so it's only going to come in right at the end of that render those are the render settings that we're going to use now we need to use our canvas all we've done here is we've got a beauty canvas already set up but we need to set our node list now i've already got a node list here but i'm going to remove that just for the sake of setting this up so so we're going to select this checkbox at the top here so that we are choosing to use canvas and then we press plus here and it will automatically add canvas one brackets beauty then down here in these options with the canvas selected we need to select the alpha checkbox make sure that this is checked and then it will come up with an option for nodes so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create a node list i'm just going to call this mum like that and that just allows us to then click on this three dotted button on the side here and we can now actually choose what the items in the scene are we, we are going to use so we're going to select the mum character there then we're going to choose basically everything backup do is not actually in there but we can just choose that so we don't need that basically just checking all of the things that we want to be included in the render that are important so all of these things are in the render so we're going to hit accept now everything that we want rendering is inside that node list now we can choose on the nodes drop down the mum list there and then we can simply hit the render button and now our 32 frames will come out with only this character in them so that's what i'm going to do i'll see you in a second now that our frames have all rendered out if we go into the directory where we rendered them there should be 32 files numbered 0 to 31. what you need to do now is open up the first frame in adobe photoshop and the reason we do this is to make sure that the pixels per inch and so on all of those values are correct because you'll get different uh, values for those things dependent on the resolution the image you output is so we're going to go to image and we're going to go to canvas size and we can see that we're currently on 1920 by 1080 so if we pull up our calculator we can just drag that over there so what we want to do is we want to we want to make this file approximately the right size for four across eight down so what we need to do is 1920 multiplied by four equals 7680 so we're just going to drop that in 7680 and then what we're going to do is work out how many 1080 times by eight is oh really messed up and we can see 8640 So we're just going to do that 
Now we can zoom all the way out by pressing Ctrl and zero, and we can see our file is here. And if we were to drag this around, you can see that the outline of the image is following us. Now, this is very important. Do not deselect this image if you want to use it, otherwise you're gonna to have to drag it back into your window. So we will just drag this up into the top left. You can see that it's now snapped there, so we're good. So frame one is done. Next thing we need to do is go into view and we're going to select lock guides. Then we're gonna to go to view again and we're gonna select a new guide. And we're gonna choose a vertical and we're gonna put this in 1920. Boom, you should see a guide come down here from the edge of that image. Now we're gonna make another guide. This one's going to be, and this is again where you can use your calculator. You can just do 1920 times by two or you can do the mental arithmetic. And then this one's going to be at 3840, boom. Now you need just one more vertical one. So we're gonna bring back our calculator. We're just gonna add 1920 again. And uh, we're gonna make sure we get that correct, 1920. This one's gonna be at 5760, so we have five. View, new guide, 5670. Boom, now we've got our four guides going across. Now we need to do the same thing for the horizontal ones. So we go view, new guide, we'll switch to horizontal going to create 1080 like so and now we've got our first guide then we need to go again we're going to go view new guys horizontal 1080 times 2 is 2160 boom next guide and so on and so forth you don't have to uh, use a calculator if you're capable of doing the mental arithmetic I'm trying to record a video which means my math skills are null and void so I am going to use my calculator 1080 times by 3 equals 3240 so this one's going to be 3240 okay and you're just going to do this and you're going to insert your images into these spaces you're going to start in the top left and you're going to work across so 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 until you've got all of your images into your template until you end up with something that looks a bit like this now what we need to do is we've got to just export this what i would advise is you don't go to quick export as png just go to export as for some reason it's smaller when we do it this way Make sure that you've got transparency turned on and smaller file turned on and then it will have a bit of a thing but then you can essentially just go to export hit the export button it'll have a bit of a thing and then you'll be able to save your file there we go now we can save this so i'm just going to go to import and just delete that and we're going to go to save cool beans right that will just do a very quick bit of thinking and then it will save our image and of course, now the last part of our process is to actually put this into RemPy. And in order to do that, I mean, you can see I've got image side images declarations here for the animations. But all we want to do is when we want to use our image, I'm just going to define it quickly for the purpose of this demonstration. We just go to image and I'm just going to call this one mum underscore pool. And then we can say it, and it's going to be an anim dot film strip like so oops there we go now we can just go to our file name so in this case it's going to be avatars slash animated forward slash mum underscore pool underscore annie but in this case i don't think we actually have underscore annie at the end of it but um i'm gonna actually put it there just for the sake of putting it there png so that's our file name now the next item in the declaration is the size of the individual images which we know to be 1920 so we're going to open brackets 1920 comma 1080 and then we're going to add another comma the next one is how many frames across and then down so we know that ours is four and we know that it is eight down perfect the next one is the time in seconds that each frame is going to be on the screen. So in this case, we know it's 0 0.0625. Basically, that's 16 frames per second. If you're doing yours at a different frames per second, then obviously you're going to have to work out how many, uh, well, what that value is yourself. Then lastly, we have the total number of frames, which is 32. And then whether or not it's going to be looping, which in our case is going to be true. 
Now I'm going to quickly load up this game and I'm going to show you one of the screens that I'm using this technique with to add the animations in. So here we are in one of my games and as you can see this icon has been animated. She's breathing away quite heavily, a lot of abdominal breathing going on there. And you can see her head is rocking backwards and forwards slightly as well. And then if I hover over, because I'm using this animation as a alpha masked image button, I can still use an animated character as a icon in the screen. And if I click on it, you can see you get an animated side image there and it just comes up with whatever information there, but that works. So hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I will see you in the next one, but until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, guys. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>